Greetings and salutations. Thank you for clicking on the video. This is a Linux tip video. We're going to talk about things you can do to fix a broken browser if it's not working right or if you're having problems with it. There are a few tricks that I know about that you can use to kind of set things straight. We're doing this video from the big desktop that has Ubuntu Mate 1604 on it. I haven't done a video from this machine in a while. Ubuntu Mate 1604 runs fine here. It was installed here when it was still in beta. I know that Ubuntu has had some issues since that 1604 release has become official. But on this machine, no problems. It's just running nicely. So let's go ahead and jump in and talk a little bit about this. We're going to talk about some of the things that can happen to make your browser act up and do goofy stuff. And how you can fix it. So the first thing that I want to show you, I've talked about this program before, but... Like I said, I keep getting asked these questions, so I'm going to go over it one more time. There is a groovy little program here. This is available for most Linux distributions. It's in the repo repos, and it is called BleachBit. And BleachBit allows you to set this thing to go through and delete stuff out of your system that you don't necessarily need. Think of it as like CCleaner for Windows. If you're familiar with that application, well, this is it for Linux, and it's called BleachBit. And I've been using BleachBit for years. It's very reliable. It doesn't trash your system. You do have to be careful about what you click here. So you'll notice here in the menu that we have two entries for BleachBit. One of them just says BleachBit, and the other one says BleachBit as root. The one we're worried about today is just BleachBit, because what that does is whatever user account you open it on, it works on the configuration files for that user. So if you're having a browser that's acting up, most likely the problem is somewhere in your cache or your configuration files all right so you can come in here and set this to blow things out i've got firefox set up to uh, get rid of the backup files get rid of the cache and to vacuum the database same thing with google chrome i just want to get rid of the cache all of this other data here is pretty important to hang on to so I don't, I don't really bother with it, and this doesn't take up any space. So if you're doing this just to reclaim space on your hard drive, that cache is what really takes up the space. That's where it puts all the pictures and crap that it downloads off of websites, and it does that so that it can find them locally again and not have to use so much bandwidth when it goes back to the web page. You can also vacuum that, which means you're just compressing the databases. So that's a cool tool to have around, and if you run that about once a month, that should really keep your system... Uh, your your browser's clean. Now, you can also do that from within the browser. So if we open up Firefox here, let it get loaded up. And if I go over here and I click on history, there's a big monitor I'm looking at here. So I kind of lean over here to talk, you know, when I'm doing something on this side of the screen. Okay, so we go to clear recent history and this will this will blow out the stuff that you've looked at in the last hour, or the last four hours, today, beginning of time, whatever. They have the same sort of functionality in Google Chrome. So you can do that manually if you like. And a lot of the times, clearing that cache, you'd be surprised. The browser will get all stuffed up and it won't work right and it'll be slow and your web page won't, won't load. If you clear that cache, that helps a lot. Sometimes you get some corrupted files in there, you get something goofy in there and starting fresh makes a big difference. Of course, you can set these browsers to delete that cache whenever you sign out, but I'm not that extreme. I let it go ahead and keep the cache. It makes the browser run faster, but every now and again, it's a good idea to blow it out. So that leads us to a question. Where is all this stuff stored? Where does it hang on to that information? I'm going to show you right now because that's a good thing to know for a couple of reasons. So if you open up your home folder here, and then you use Control H, it will show you hidden files. If we scroll down through here for Firefox, you're going to see a file called, or a folder rather, called Mozilla. And this is where all of your personal information and all of the settings for your web browser are stored. They are in here. So here's all the extensions that you have installed or information about extensions. Then we have Firefox. Okay. So now you, you see what that does. And you can just delete that and open up your browser. And it's like you started it for the first time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out. 
I'm going to put it on my desktop. Of course, it disappears. We can't see it now because the desktop's not set up to show hidden files. But it's there. And now I'm going to open up Firefox. Look at this. Don't import anything. Now we have really started from scratch. There are no saved passwords here. There's nothing. This is just like Firefox never existed on the computer because that is where all of your information is stored and if there's like okay so let's say for instance that somebody comes along and they install some weird extension it's not necessarily malware but it's not niceware and you can't get rid of it like some crazy toolbar or something like that and it doesn't want to uninstall and all that stuff you could just blow their stuff completely out and say I'm sorry you're starting from scratch you know and then that would take care of it also if you have an extension that's not working properly then you you may have to do that as well because that might get the browser to the point where it just simply won't run of course that is a last ditch thing to do but you know you can do that so if I go in here now we'll go ahead and close this and all of my personal settings are gone out of that so I'm going to go back through here and I'm going to find that Mozilla folder again. This one was just created and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that sucker. Now what we're going to do is go to desktop and I, I can see it here. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to go back up to Joe and then I'm just going to paste it in here. And yes, you can do all this from a terminal with commands if you like. And a lot of times I do. Somebody will say, my browser's not working. I'll just reset them. <laughs> like, okay, do you have any saved passwords? You know, the, kid, the kids don't have a lot of that stuff and they don't care. So it's just like, okay, now open it again. Thanks, Daddy, it works. Okay, so we put that back. And now when I open up Firefox, it should be back to my account. And everything should be the way it was. And as you can see, it is. Okay. So that is a cool trick to know. Also, it's a good idea to back that up. If you, especially if you are not one of those who wants to use a sync service, what I do with my browsers is both Mozilla and Google have sync options that you can set up that will hang on to whatever data you want to sync between browsers. I have three machines. So I don't know minute to minute what machine I'm going to be on. So my, like, cert, you know, my history here. I can go in here, let's see, I go to history and uh, uh, I can look on I, everything that I've looked on, like here's the weather forecast, okay? I open this on another computer, but the history shows up here because they're syncing that. They're also syncing things like passwords, they're syncing things like settings, they sync extensions, they sync things like that, okay? so. There you go. And I would love to show you this how to set up the sync service, but that's really beyond the scope of this video. That's something you can figure out for yourself. I'm just saying you can fix that. If you do have the system set up to sync, it can present an issue. Sometimes a problem can get synced. So you may have to get in there and tell it not to sync something, then go around all the browsers that you're synced to, all the machines that you're synced up to, fix the problem, and then you can resync it again. See, that's why I'm not getting into it in the video. So what about Google Chrome? Let me show you where their stuff is because it's pretty much the same deal. So if I go in here and I go Control H once again, Google Chrome puts its sync files under the .config folder where a lot of programs store their configuration files. So if I drag this out to the desktop once again, all right, and now I go and I open up Google Chrome. See, it's asking me if it, if it wants to be the default browser. I say, okay, I don't care. And now we have a completely clean Google Chrome and it wants me to log into my Google account to sync everything up. So what I usually do is I go ahead and keep backups of these configuration files, but I don't take those backups from machine to machine because it becomes device specific. So yeah, I'll back it up on the same machine. In other words, if I have to reinstall or something like that, then I can take what I just backed up and put back, and then it'll open up and it's right where I was. But I don't take these files and then back them up and then 
put it on another machine because then the sync service gets confused and it doesn't know what machine it's on. I hope that makes sense. So we can go ahead and just get rid of this one we just created when we opened it. All right. We're going to put this back. And now we're back to my settings. So everything is in those folders. That's true for every user on the machine. So if you have three or four three or four people are going to be using the computer, go ahead and set them up an individual account. And this will keep their browser settings and email settings and things like that, keep them separate from everybody else's. And if you have a problem or if you have somebody that clicks on something that messes up the browser that's isolated to that person's browser, it doesn't screw it up for everybody. And that's a good thing to do. So like all of my kids have accounts on their machine that they log into. So if somebody clicks on something that messes up the browser, then, you know, we ain't got a problem there. So anyway, that's just a real quick video, gang, to show you guys how to do that. And uh, that's where all that stuff is stored. You can use BleachBit. You can clear out the thing there. You can totally reset the browser. Usually, it's not going to do you much good to reinstall the browser. So if you just reinstall it, it's not going to fix the problem although a lot of people say hey reinstall those configuration files stay behind it's it's all happening in the configuration files so you don't have to necessarily reinstall just uh, replace the configuration file and then you reopen the browser and it will just start from scratch hope that makes sense so anyway thank you for watching I hope this video was helpful and love to hear your comments and suggestions. Please check out freedompenguin.com for lots of great articles about Linux. Also check out Easy Linux on the web and check out Easy Linux on Facebook. And if you do, give it a like. Talk to you again soon.